Good morning. Today is April 5th, 2024, Friday. We're in front of Shabbat, and uh, we continue with our Tanya, our Tanya studies. Beautiful morning. And, uh, summer is coming, so we can probably do our lessons outside pretty soon. Good idea. So we have, for 35 lessons of Tanya, there's a 53 lessons, we're more than, a lot more than half now. We've been learning about basically relationship between people and God, God and people, and people and people. Talk about emotional issues, and Tanya was giving us uh, pointers how to deal with issues. And of course, Tanya was written as a practical guide for people to help their not only spiritual issues, but physical issues, problems, questions. In 18th century Poland, when a farmer goes to a rabbi, uh, he didn't go to him to understand how the uh, universe functioning and how many stars are in the sky. They want to know if the chicken is kosher, if they have enough to eat, or how to deal with a drought, how to deal with the relationship with the family, with the wife, husband, um, how to survive pogroms, and other problems. So it was a very practical guide. And that's what Tanya addressed essentially for 36, uh, 35 lessons. On 36 lessons, 36 chapter, Tanya is beginning to shift gears towards, now let's stop and think about now, what about this dynamics of relationship between the uh, God and us? And of course, uh, Tanya is based on Kabbalah, on Zohar concept of uh, where the light, we did this, uh, remember, in the past, we presented the, uh, the, the 10th Sfirot, the 10th Sfirot, which is a uh, uh, mechanism, not uh, that it is actually physically, there's a 10th, some kind of, units. This is just uh, conceptually understand the attributes of God, the kindness and uh, judgment and uh, chokhmah, understanding the chokhmah uh, bina dat, yesod malchut, and then also Tanya talks about the light coming to the universe. He has another page from Ein Sof up on top to progressively coming down, down through the world of Atsilut emanation, to next word Berea, word of creation, then Yetzirah, formation, and finally, finally action, which is the word of Asiya. So that's how infinity comes down to the final world. It's very difficult to understand uh, how infinity becomes finite. But now we're going to today use some high mathematics to explain this concept. We talked about for past lessons that the reason that God did it, it's almost like when you look into the sun, you cannot look at the sun without dark glasses. So when you, what you see, you see the world around you. It's not exactly the world the way the sunlight will illuminate it because the colors change, perception changes. But if you don't use your glasses, if you look at the sun directly, you, know, you can go blind. That's kind of analogy how the God's wisdom cannot be perceived by us if we don't have those filters. And of course, we talked about that uh, Kabbalah tells us that in the world to come, in Alam Haba, when the soul reaches the upper echelons of the universe, it can bask directly in the light of God without having these filters, the glasses, to perceive it. Even then, Tanya is teaching us, the soul is not one with God, so to speak. It's still observing God very closely, unrestricted, but it still doesn't have that unity. That unity, Tanya teaches, can be achieved on this world by the mechanism of prayer, Torah study, and mitzvot, good deeds. And last time, in the last lesson, we have this chart. Remember this chart, the diagram? Look like biochemistry or anatomy, biology 101. We talk about the cell. You can review previous lesson, yesterday or day before, when we talked about divine soul surrounded by animal soul and the garments the soul puts around it and how the person can attach himself, his soul directly to God, to uh, this, this, this uh, 
dispose of the duality of the God of God and come to the unity of God. So we're talking about it yesterday. I'm not going to repeat it right now. But basically, now we're just trying to understand it a little bit more, um, more philosophically, so to speak. So Tanya is saying the purpose of creation was indeed to make this lower world. So you can say why God didn't just end it with creating the upper world. Maybe just create angels and just do, why, why, why are we here? Why didn't he need to create us in such a lower level? And then give us all the challenges, try to reach him to begin with. Why does God need all that? Well, Tanya was just saying that if God created only upper levels, even they would not have a full connection with God. So if you do something, might as well get it down to the very bottom. Um, and uh, I, mean, I think spiritually, many people understand it. Tanya asks us, Tanya says, well, why, why God had to create the lowest of the lowest world, our world? I mean, that's because his will, we can understand why. But then Tanya gives us hints that we actually can understand why. You know, I, I remember my wife worked as a uh, physical therapist in a facility where people were suffering from uh, lots of diseases. And my wife always worked to help him, people, older people and uh, so forth. And she was telling me, you know, if the, um, it's one thing when somebody is a, you know, running marathon and instead of two hours and 15 minutes, he makes it in two hours and uh, uh, 10 minutes. It's a great accomplishment. But she said somebody is completely paralyzed and the therapists are working on it, on him for years. And eventually a person can just move a little bit the finger. That's a, that's a humongous, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a wonderful step on accomplishment versus, you know, you have a million dollars income, now you make a million and a half. Comparing to those things, so when you, when you make somebody happy who has completely nothing, completely nothing, and you, make, and you elevate this person to more dignified state, it's a lot better that somebody has a minimum income and you make him or her millionaire. Well, to go from a $50,000 salary a year to a, to a million dollar salary a year, it's very wonderful, of course. But to get somebody who is completely broke, had his house repossessed because he couldn't pay the mortgage, and then give the person financial, financial independence, or we discussed before, somebody doesn't have a home, sick, doesn't have any parents, doesn't have any relatives, doesn't have any money, and then bring him to a facility, and Jewish community get, comes together and, and puts money to make a facility with a nursing care, all, all that, to help the person. That's a very, very, uh, we all understand it spiritually how dignified that approach is. If that's what how Tanya is presenting God. He wanted to make this world in a way that, that make the darkness and then have our uh, freedom of choice to bring the light to that. And the me me mechanism of that Tanya is talking about through Torah studies, through mitzvot, good deeds, through a prayer, through good things. Not just sit and learn Torah mechanically, but actually apply it to action. So here I was going to, I made a little, little uh, chart here. You can, you know, we talk about tzum tzum, like a circle with a line through it. So Kabbalistically, they say that you know, God restricted himself give, to give us freedom of power. He has to take away some of his power. So how can he remove his power, give us freedom of choice, like he doesn't know what we're going to do, we do. Um, when God gave us this freedom of choice, did he limit himself? Well, that's a central concept. He did, and yet he didn't. Difficult to understand. But if you took a look at, at these diagrams, this is diagrams of 10 spherot. You see this 10 spherot? So the light comes in from infinity down to us, progress, progressively getting diminished, so that we can receive it and understand it. And here, those of you who may be mathematicians probably heard of concept of Laplace transform in mathematics. This is a function, f of s. fs equals integral from zero to infinity. ft, the time function, e minus st dt. That's time goes from the time domain to the s domain. That, that mathematics, if those of you who are mathematicians can understand how infinity 
can actually be transformed into the uh, finality. So from the perspective from the bottom, from us up, we see that something is getting created. So we live in the universe and we're thinking, how old is the universe? 6,000 years, 15 billion years, whatever it is. But it's a time and space. From our perspective, we have a time and space. But from the infinity, from God's perspective, it always existed. So that transformation, that Laplace transform from infinity to finality is what God does to bring this filtered light to us. So God sees this as an integral, you know, the total. And integral the Laplace transform makes a function that goes from a zero, finite. So one divided by zero is infinity. But if you integrate that by Laplace transform, that becomes an area under the curve, not going to too much mathematic concept. The point is, from God's perspective, it is all the same. It's integrated. From our perspective, there is a time and space. From God's perspective, there is no time and space. He has always created us. He has always did it forever from our forever, from God's perspective, that just a concept of status, of unity, always existed. That's maybe the best way I can explain Laplace transform to go from infinity to finality. And that is why we can understand, appreciate, and relate to God as infinite in our world. To understand, yes, we cannot see that from his eyes, from, he, from that way. But we can indirectly relate to the fact that the time and space gets created as the moving from the infinite light down to us. From God's perspective, that is a, the same thing forever, so to speak, from our forever. From our perspective, it's been evolving and changing. From his, it's not. Well, that's the chapter 36. <clears throat> and um, chapter 36 here mentions... Also, he says, chapter 36 talks about purpose of creation, and he says, let me read this. Practically speaking, if you were God and the world didn't yet exist, how could you demonstrate the truth that nothing exists outside God? One approach would be to do nothing and just leave yourself existing and everything else non-existing. But another approach would be to create a force which tried to conceal your existence but ultimately failed to do so. And while you would never be fooled by that force, you could make creatures that were influenced by it. You would give them the choice whether to be drawn in by its illusion or to reject it. And while it would be a very convincing force and exert power for a long time, eventually the force will be eliminated completely by creatures, by us, choosing good and over evil. Then you would have demonstrated that nothing exists outside God because anything that did oppose God was shown to be unsustainable. So, um, that's a concept. So God created the negative force in order to give us a free choice. God created a spring that we have to compress and work against. But once we overcome it, and God, God gave us our time, it takes many years, thousands of years, maybe million, if you believe in evolution from amoebas, amoebas. But in any case, whichever way God created this, He gave us opportunity and the freedom of choice to transform the darkness into the light. And now, I mean, nowadays, I think we are all witnessing the times when the world, darkness, gathers us together and the forces of evil trying very hard to extinguish the light. But the more they try to extinguish it, the brighter it becomes. So we see, even in today's world, that uh, Israel is, is working with itself to come up with uh, identifying, to confirming its identity as a God-fearing nation, as a nation that uh, wants to bring light to the world and then we're trying, sometimes we make steps, sometimes we make missteps, sometimes we do this, sometimes we do that. But overall movement towards the bringing the power of light of the Creator into the world is obvious to those who want to open their eyes and see. And we hope and pray that the world will see that. Torah and Tanya uh, tells us that these are the days that are supposed to happen. Our prophets predicted all that. 
Uh, we are witnessing it. We hope we're witnessing the days when the darkness finally will come out. The nations will break through the shell of the klipa that covers the nations that will, will not glorify the, the torture, tormentions, disrespect, and hate, but will bring the love, the peace, and coexistence, understanding, and love of God, and love of humanity, and respect to each other, love of each other, will come to the front, front and, uh, in the forefront. And hopefully, these are the days that we're experiencing right now. Hopefully, that final redemption and peace for entire humanity is coming soon. And that is what practical Tanya ultimately teaches us. And this is what we are praying for together. With that, we'll see you on Sunday. In the meantime, Shabbat Shalom. Have a good discussion at your Shabbat table about this. See what you agree, what you don't disagree, what other additional ideas you want to have. But uh, I'll see you Sunday. Shabbat Shalom.